Okay. So, as promised, we're going to talk about clinics now. I just started doing clinics. Um, I had been asked multiple times, you know, are you going to do any clinics? Are you going to do any clinics? And I'll be honest with you, when I first started kind of trying to branch out and, and get myself known around the area, I was offered an opportunity to do clinics at a farm, one of the few first people that I'd ever worked with horses for, um, you know, had me come and do clinics at her place. And I warned her before I went for the very first one and said, I have no idea. You know, I haven't watched enough clinics to know how clinics work. Um, I haven't um, done one ever, and I'm still new to working with people. So my people skills and my teaching skills of people, not even so much my, my people skills like, you know, I'm not a nice person people skills, which, you know, I agree to that as well, but, um, but that's not the people skills I was referring to. My, my inability to um, know the right way to teach a person something that I can just sort of just do. Um, so, I agreed anyway, and, you know, heeded the warning that, look, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing, I really, you know, whatever. So, it turned out that, um, uh, I bombed. <laughs> um, and I had decided, you know, oh, I'm not doing this again, I have no interest in doing this again, it really just was not my thing. I, I knew people were you know, thinking what they could have better done with their day and this and everything. So I was really, really disappointed in myself and, you know, confirmed for myself this, this part isn't for me. So I wasn't a born clinician um, and I realized that. So it was, it was fine, you know, it was, I was a little embarrassed that I had something to share but didn't know how to share it. Um, and, uh, you know, and I didn't have a platform to even really know how to, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have a background, I didn't have, I hadn't seen enough clinics to know what even happens at clinics or, or how a clinic is, how an itinerary for a clinic works or nothing, I didn't know anything. So, anyway, like I said, I bombed, decided that's not for me, and uh, moved on and went several years without doing anything clinic style. And this young girl that I had mentioned before who did some kind of clerical stuff and, and some advertisement stuff and promotional stuff for me, she uh, she was real big on, you really should do some clinics, you really should you know, really get out there and, and do some clinics. And I had said that, you know, look, it really it wasn't my thing, I didn't, I, I did a terrible job at it and I left very disappointed in myself and felt very disappointed for other people to have wasted their day with me. And I did, she said, you know, she just kind of encouraged me to do a few here, you know, do a few at your own place, and you can control the, the size of it, you can control the pace of it, you can control, you know, and, and you have the forum more to ask what people want, you know, from you. In this way, you know, you can kind of groom your event into what these people came hoping to learn. Now, I do, on, on Facebook and stuff, I try all the time, I'm like, what would you want to learn? I, I reach out to people all the time, like if you were to do a clinic, you know, if you were to pay to take yourself and your horse to a clinic, what would you hope to get out of it? Nobody tells me. <laughs> and it's it's very frustrating because I think I would be like, you know, well, I would hope to learn this or, or, you know, but maybe it's just nobody wants to seem, I don't know, I would say you nobody know, wants to seem kind of undereducated to where they wouldn't want to ask, can you teach me how to do this, or I'd like to learn how to do this, but anyway, so nobody ever, you know, helped me with that, so I took this girl's advice, and I set up a clinic a couple years ago, and it was good, you know, it was good, and the people who came felt that they had learned a lot, I got a lot of good feedback, however, I was kind of hoping for what I experienced when I saw my first clinic, you know, I, I left like, couldn't stop talking about it, I was thrilled, and oh my god, you know, and it wasn't so, you know, like I said, mine wasn't that I was learning horsemanship, it was, I learned that people 
actually, you know, market this. It's got a name, and, and people, you know, come and look at this stadium. It's full of people who came to watch this guy talk to you about what he does. And and I, I just truly was, you know, like, I, I found that to be a very exciting thing. So people weren't leaving my clinic with that same enthusiasm. So I was like, oh, I don't know. It's still not really for me, I guess. And then... I did a couple more, I got, you know, more feedback. I was able to really kind of design my clinics based on the feedback that I had been getting. Um, I learned, you know, sometimes they're too big, sometimes they're, um, you know, the attention is too much on, on maybe a task that we could avoid doing or doing at the end or something. And I learned a lot. And then one of the things that I did one day um, the second day of a clinic had, had um, uh, I want to say bombed, I guess. People, there were a lot of cancellations to the second day, and really it was like a small group, and, and they were all people that I knew um, and, you know, enjoyed their company anyway. So we did it kind of like a play day. We just, like, just kind of went out there and, and played with some stuff, and... I didn't have obstacles. It wasn't it wasn't a play day that was designed with obstacles or anything like that. But you know there were a couple of things that we um, tried to use. So like put you know we challenged everybody to put their horse's nose on a certain dent in you know one of my round pen panels or something. You know and we really kind of went along with doing stuff like that. And before I knew it, I was like we all had a great time. It was fun. It was engaging. Everybody was involved in each person's thing. So I was like, that was fun. It was like a play day. Like we came and we played. We played kind of like as adults to, with each other as well as, you know, we played with our horses. And of course the horses got something out of it. They got a chance to play with their human. So that's how the Positive Way Play Day came to be. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's, is just that. It's a play day. You come, now I have, you know, I've built and designed obstacles, so now I have things that we're actually using as specific obstacles. And um, we come and uh, you and your horse and, and other people and their horses, and sometimes people rent one of my horses, but we uh, spend the day doing kind of cool tasks. And the cool thing is, is that not everybody does, we all do the same obstacle, but not everybody does it the same way. Meaning, um, one obstacle might be uh, going through the noodles, okay? Like I have two noodles that are made into a jump standard, so there's noodles that like kind of like giant eyelashes. And um, you have to get your horse to go through this noodle thing. The cool thing is, is that, say, you know, participant A has to go through it forwards. Participant B has to take their horse. Now they pulled it's like we we did it like kind of out of a hat. You you pull what your how you need to get your horse to do this particular obstacle. So one person might have to do the horse backwards. Someone might have to figure out how to make their horse go sideways. Um, so we're not all bored watching everybody do the same. Run their horse through the obstacle. Run their horse through the obstacle. No. This person got their horse to go forward through it. Now we're going to watch this person get their horse to go backward through it. <coughs> watch this person try to get their horse to go sideways through it. Um, it's pretty cool. It, we, we really, like, the first one I did that was specifically um, a scheduled, designed, planned out play day um, was awesome. Everybody left saying, when are you going to do another one? When's the next one, you know? And people re returned. And it wasn't just like they were saying it out of enthusiasm and, and just gave me good feedback. But the next one I did, those same people came. So we had a really good time. I'm really enjoying it. I'm very, very excited about um, this spring. Going to do a lot of play days this spring. I'm going to probably do one at least two, three, to three weekends a month. Um, maybe two Saturdays and a Sunday for those people who can't do a Saturday. I'm also been um, booked or not booked, but told we want to get on the calendar for 2018 uh, at other farms. So you know it, it may not be something you can make here, but you know you'll get advertised. You'll see advertisement of where else we might be doing one. 
um, and then you might be able to attend one at another farm. Um, it's exciting. The only difference between doing it at another farm and here is that I won't personally have horses you can rent, but the farm might. You know, there'll be you know other inquiries where you can find out if you can rent a, a horse from them. It's almost to somebody's advantage by renting one of my horses because obviously my horses understand everything that we're teaching people how to do. So you really you might even reach a level of boredom using one of my horses because. You know, you don't have to teach them anything. They see that obstacle and you, they just ask you, how do you want me to do it? You tell them and then they just do it. Where the other, another horse might not know how to back up, uh, might not know how to uh, go sideways yet. So like that horse would get taught something that day where my horses are just like, you know, oh yeah, okay, you want me to go sideways? Sure, all right, here we go. Um, so it might actually be more fun to go to one at another farm if if the opportunity is available to use one of their horses rent one of their horses for it then it's a horse you're getting to know you'll find believe it or not the people who bring their own horses are getting to know their horses that day because it's not something that they normally do normally they go to the barn they tack up they ride they untack they brush maybe hose off depending on the weather or how hot your horse is and then they put the horse back out to you know enjoy the rest of his day with his buddies um, sometimes people don't take the time to know their horses more than the time it takes to brush them. You know, yeah, okay, yeah, he, he does this on the cross ties, and you know that about your horse kind of thing, but for the most part, you may not really know your horse. Or when you're grazing your horse, you find that your horse picks every blade of grass he plans on eating, and you're getting dragged around while you're playing with your phone or whatever. I mean, I don't consider that connecting. Um, what I do when I hand graze my horses is uh, I pick a spot, I have a cue to tell them to put their head down. They're allowed to graze. I pick an amount of time or just, you know, until I pick another spot. And then I tap them on their withers. That tells them to pick their head up. We walk to another location. I tell them to put their head down. They get to graze. I'm controlling where they graze. I'm still making it about my leadership with my horse while we're doing something that they want to do. Um, it's the same exact thing that you would see in the field. Like I love just watching my horses. Another thing that I was picked on for, even since I've been in New York, actually, um, I've been picked on for the fact that I just watch my horses. Uh, I don't actually care. I'm flattered. Go ahead, pick on me. Like I know my horses so super well that it wouldn't phase me a bit if you thought it was funny. Um, but when you watch them graze amongst themselves, you'll see that the lead horse, or even just one that's ranked above another, will uh, decide that you're enjoying your grass a little too much, there must be something good over there, and then they'll go and drive that horse off of that patch of grass and claim that real estate for themselves. And then maybe somebody above that horse will say, well, shoot, you know, you're enjoying it, so, you know, you need to move. And you watch them just move each other around, and before you know it, your horses are at the far end of the field, and that's because they've done that. You know, they started out as soon as they got through the gate, found a nice little piece of grass and started eating right there. And then gradually they pushed each other around all day. <coughs> so that's what I do with my horses when I hand graze them. I don't just hand graze them and let me let them drag me around and, you know, just hang out and play on my phone or chat with somebody or talk on the phone. I actually engage my horse in active grazing. Um... There's so many cool things you can do with your horse. You know what? It's funny to me that people don't go and play with their horses. Um, you know, I didn't get a dog in my life because I, I wanted to be able to ride my dog. Um, and I'll take my dog and I'll spend time with my dog and people take their dogs to the park and they run and play with their dog. And So I don't understand what the difference actually is. Your horse is, is an animal that likes to be stimulated, likes to be praised, likes to be loved, um, likes to play. So if you take the time to do what you would do with your dog and go to the farm and play with your horse, um, what, what a cool relationship you can develop. You'd be so amazed. Like the one woman that was one of the first people that taught me to work with people, um, she said that the reason she wanted me to help her was because she loved watching the relationship I had with my horse and she wanted that for herself and her horse and I've heard that a couple times you know people saying that they just wanted to get whatever it was that I was getting because they saw it was magical and it is it's absolutely magical to have an amazing relationship with a horse I know my horse is inside and out my horses know what I want my horses know how to please me my horses don't want to disappoint me 
and it's all because i've developed the relationship that i've developed with them take your horse out and play with them if your horse is lame through a shoe something that would um, otherwise inhibit you from riding don't make that the day you go shopping instead you know what i'm saying like your horse is stuck in a 12 by 12 box say he threw a shoe or he's lame or something or, or whatever he's stuck in that box horses are designed to roam in a herd now you've put him in a cage you've put him in a trap and now you say well you know what if you were rideable i'd come visit you today but because you're not rideable phew, i got other things to do well personally i don't think you should be a horse owner maybe you should be somebody who rides horses but um i think horse, horse ownership has a much greater emotional responsibility i think you need to be emotionally responsible for your horse's emotional health for your horse's mental health um why do you think these race horses do all this kind of stuff or crib i mean the most common um vice holding breed is a thoroughbred standard bred race horses you know horses that get run hard and, and put away wet and that's their life and all that time in their stall where they're mentally, you know, they're, they're bred to, to go, 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 go. And then you're telling them, but try to do that in these walls, you know. So, of course, they're going to develop vices. They're going to sit on buckets and pull on things and knock walls down and weave and pace and walk in circles. They're going to do all a crib. They're going to do all those things because they, they're mentally, they're in, a, they're in a rubber room, you know. Um... So, don't let your horses wonder how they got you. <laughs> um, you know how you drive by a, a house where you've seen this same dog chained up on this heavy chain tied to a tree, his water bucket, his water bowl is flipped upside down every time you drive by. Um, he sits on top of his dog house because, you know, the area he's in is so soiled, he doesn't even want to lay down. And you drive by and you think, that poor dog, what did he deserve to have that human? Like, what did he do to deserve that human? Don't let your horses sit back and wonder that about you. What did I do to deserve my human? You want your horses to go, man, look at his buddy on the other side of the paddock and go, you, you, you have no idea, I've got the greatest human. My human's going to be here in like 20 minutes and my human's going to take me out and play with me. You want your horse to be that excited to see you when you come to the gate. I can go to the gate with a halter, with a lead rope, with a bridle, with a saddle. It does not matter. My horses see me coming and they gallop to the gate. I have plenty of videos of evidence of that. Um, horses that I train, I can come out with a saddle, something that they're just learning and maybe learning to not like so much, but I can guarantee you I've made it interesting and pleasant enough that the horse will not shy and run away when they see a saddle. And you know how many horses I've seen in my experience, in my um, profession where I go to somebody else's barn and I see somebody, you know, with the lead rope behind their back or shaking a bucket of grain or crinkling, you know, cookie treats in their pockets and stuff and they still, for the life of them, they spend an hour trying to catch their horse. By the time they've caught their horse, their time that they've allotted to be at the barn is over. Um, that's your feedback. <laughs> That's your feedback. So I'm going to end on that note, but strive to have better feedback. Strive to have the best feedback you could possibly have because I promise you, your horses have no reason to lie to you. If your horses don't want to be with you, that's your feedback. <laughs>